A Matissimo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the A Matissimo show, and I have a bit of a special manga review for you today. And it's one that I kind of I browse the catalog of what's coming out every month, and I order certain titles to my store uh, to sell them, of course, and also for for myself to take a look at and do some reviews for you guys, so we can kind of see what's new, uh, what's potentially exciting, and what we can maybe look at together. So this is not explicitly. It could be um, a Yuri, um, so I'm not going to title it as a Yuri, but it's called Nightfall Travelers Leave Only Footprints. And as you maybe saw from the thumbnail, but as you definitely see right here, is that that cover really drew my attention because I love twilight, I love the evening time, and this one really showcased that really beautifully on this cover. So I had I had high hopes for this one, um, Nightfall Travelers, and I, I, I read it recently and I kind of wanted to give my thoughts on this very unique and special manga that uh, really just left, left me quite speechless, uh, to be honest. So let's read the back and get into it a little bit. Um, definitely unlike anything I've read recently. So urban exploration is best done at dusk. So high schooler Nenomori Akane is assigned by the newspaper club to report on local places that are rumored to be haunted. She asks the new transfer student Amamura Fujino to join her and together they discover the simple truths behind the spooky stories. Their friendship grows as they explore their town of labyrinthine paths and endless stairways. So yeah, Akane and Fujino. Okay, I'm gonna to try to remember that. Probably all these names floating around in my head. It's sometimes hard to remember them. So I'm sorry if I get them wrong here and there. So yeah, that's that's the story of Nightfall Travelers. It's very, very simple. It's just Akane, again, gets asked by a newspaper club to explore various spooky stories throughout their town and figure out what's going on and then reporting on them in the newspaper. She doesn't want to do so long, so she asks a fairly new transfer student, Fujino, to come with her. So Akane is a very short, very short girl, and then Fujino is a little bit taller. She's got long hair, very reclusive, seems very shy. And she ends up going with Akane on these adventures. And that's literally it um, for as far as like the basic story each chapter is a self-contained exploration of the town at dusk in the evening time and twilight whenever the sun is almost set but not quite and the world is painted a beautiful montage of purple red and yellow and i just love it so much i personally plan a lot of my runs that i go on very frequently um, at that time because i enjoy it just that much running with the sun just going down and painting the world just a beautiful color that lasts so brief and is beautiful because of its briefness. And the fact that this one takes place inside that time frame with these girls exploring this town, this labyrinthian town, is just a beautiful concept to me and really kind of touches on some feelings that I truly can resonate with. Um, not Maybe not everyone, but for me, it's definitely it definitely left a personal impact on me, which I really, really enjoyed. So getting into the presentation, that is both a real treat and also I have some contentions with it. So let's get into it. So the presentation itself, I'm going to say overall, character designs are really nice. Now, we really focus almost solely on Akane and Fujino. There are some other characters that pop up in here and there, but Akane and Fujino are our main characters, and they are definitely distinctly different enough that I, I give credit to the artist for making them very different. And this... Um, Art has a very, very unique style to it. And it has almost like a water brushed feel to it. So the backgrounds, which are a major part of this story because the whole idea is exploring this amazing town, um, are done extremely, extremely well. And there's such an amazing attention to detail that it left me thinking like, oh my God, this must have taken so much time to draw and uh, or even paint or however they did it. And it's just so mesmerizing. Every page is just full of detail and something to look at. And it's just simply, gorgeous and I can't give enough credit and I'm one who really respects a well-drawn background whenever that is basically the sole focus of your manga color me impressed because that is not easy so this one every page like I can I can almost recognize how much effort and time and money this must have ta uh, taken to create and it makes me want to buy it all the more much more to support that um, so yeah the characters they aren't the central focus but they look really good really cute whenever you get the close-ups of them talking to one another Fujino and particular is very very beautiful and serene and almost ethereal in the way that she presents herself and I really enjoy that quite a bit uh, and Akane is super cute she has some fun expressions and I like her as well but the backgrounds truly steal the show inside this so whenever you're exploring these various venues you really get a feel for the different aspects that this particular ghost story that they're trying to debunk is trying to exemplify within these painted pictures upon the page so it's truly truly a treat now 
the downside I would say is that sometimes I did find it a little too blockchain dark and I would say like definitely read this inside really a, a well lit area because if you're reading it in kind of even like slightly dark setting it's hard to see everything and it can feel a little disorienting um, but what I can say is that the colored pages we get that strangely occur about halfway through the book you get a bunch of colored pages my god like I would willingly pay an extra five even ten dollars if this was colored from front to back like that would truly represent exactly what this what this story was going for i understand like costliness that would be a little bit much but oh man like those colored pages are just so gorgeous i i've been struggling to find stuff online so i probably don't have pictures beside me unfortunately to showcase this but it's just so glorious and i really really enjoyed the presentation inside this one definitely some of the best presentation I've seen recently inside manga and I highly recommend checking it out if you enjoy something artistically and visually stimulating. Now as far as development goes this is a very simple manga where we have Akane and Fujino exploring their city and you get to see these beautiful things and see these ghost stories and as far as development goes there's not a whole lot honestly like it's very simple and uh you know a new place every chapter kind of thing but there's enough development that keeps me interested it's one of those like super super slow burns that we see Akane and Fujino getting closer and closer and that's kind of why I said like it could be a Yuri maybe I don't know they could be just friends maybe that's just me and my Yuri tardness kind of going off but Nonetheless, I do, even if it is just friendship, I do really like the relationship that's forming, forming between Akane and Fujino. You really get this authentic sense of building trust, of building exploration, of building uh, friendship between these two girls, especially as the, uh, near the end of this series, whenever they're going through and they like, Fujino's laughing and she sounds like a ghost and she scares some boys because of the tall grass and everything. It's just really great moments between the two of them that I truly authentically enjoyed. So while there's not an excessive amount of development, there's enough and you feel like you're going on an adventure with these, these uh, two girls every chapter and you feel like they're taking you throughout this beautiful, beautiful town somewhere in Japan, I'm sure that I truly could not get enough of and I had a real trouble putting down and when I did I was like wow that felt good that was just so fun and really took me back to adolescence and the awe of exploring unknown territories and really gives me inspiration to do that again especially when I'm on my runs to just kind of explore and take the world in and take reality in and not to get swept up in the fast-paced uh life that we especially as adults tend to so yeah as for my final thoughts for nightfall travelers um it is a must buy for me but i can understand how objectively some people might be like well that's kind of boring and that's kind of lame but for me for the inner explorer for the inner adventure for the person who loves paintings who loves beautiful landscape pictures who loves exploration and towns and all that kind of th uh, uh, this this sense of adventure um it is it is a must buy in my opinion it's just definitely one of those more special manga that i feel like will not get enough popularity so i'm glad uh, unfortunately now my youtube channel is so small because my previous one got deleted but hopefully this video can kind of spread enough that at least a few people can buy this book and truly support the artists and the efforts that clearly went into nightfall travelers so that's it everybody i hope you enjoyed this video and i can't wait to do another one and talk to you on the next episode of the a mitissimo show take care